Okay, so I think we should be live now to say, at uh, the very least, it's a um, bit of a rampant time at the moment, as uh, there is, um, there's a lot of games on tonight that they're cutting out a lot short. So, for example, if you hear shouting at the moment, it is because of the family is watching uh, the AFL preliminary final between... Um, the Swans and Colling, the Swans and Collingwood, which um, I personally don't understand because like this is the first time they've probably watched AFL all season, and it's literally the game just before the uh, before the AFL Grand Final. But let's start this stream a little bit early as we're going into the. Uh, I'm still actually filling up the uh, the team list actually, but the, it's the uh, the second semi final for the NRL, the Cronulla Sharks taking up against. The, going up against the South Sydney uh, Rabbitohs, basically whoever wins this goes on to play Penrith uh, in the preliminary final, so it's going to be a very am I your am I your on yes <laughs> but I <clears throat> Olivia, um, it says there's, um, there's a few more, I'm not too not too sure, but yeah uh, but who knows? But anyways, um, we still got plenty of time, really. I mean, we've got about forty-five minutes until the game starts, so it's just you know, I mean, it's forty-five minutes. It's like there's plenty of, I don't know, things to do. Get the washing sorted. I'm just filling out the final bit of the team sheet as um, I'm trying to figure out because this um this AFL game's actually been pretty interesting because the Swans have been very much in front for like majority of the game and now Collingwood have actually started to mount a bit of a cunt up oh, the Swans have got a goal it's now a 20 point lead with about four to go I think the Swans should have it Tom Papley with the goal Swans have been a bit dire this second this uh, final quarter but I think that should be okay Sevilla Havili <clears throat> but yes <clears throat> Bunny's gonna win a Rodos fan yeah it's gonna be um it be interesting to see what happens, but uh, obviously we should probably discuss the game that happened uh, last night, the Parramatta Eels and the Canberra Raiders. Um, I mean, what can be said? Parramatta finally, they have finally ended their um, their unwanted streak of uh, losing in the semi-final. They've um, they completely dominated the match. It's it's the team that Parramatta should have been. For the last couple of years going into the finals but they just haven't been able to actually get over the line and like just be a little bit underwhelming but now i mean they finally have done it they're going on to take on the cowboys in north queensland for um the chance to be in the first grand final since in about be about 13 years now since 2009 so just very quickly let's um have a look at the votes to see what everyone's saying and it's Interesting to say the least. Six votes coming in. It is currently a dead heat. It is three all in favour of no one, actually. It's actually a 50-50 split down the middle, which has kind of been sort of reflected on how all of the hype for this game has really been. It's like you can't really separate these two teams enough. The only way that you can really separate them is by um the distance in the ladder. But again, it's just... That's just... It. That's... um. We don't need that to uh, be a big deterrent because obviously Canberra did beat uh, the Storm last week. <laughs> I think it was. <clears throat> I think I was actually very happy that uh, Canberra did beat Melbourne. It uh, was a bit unfortunate that um, they did get bodied <laughs> by Parramatta, but I think it's a good run nonetheless. I think, in fairness, um, you've got to give a big assist to Brisbane for absolutely fumbling the bag in terms of the uh, in terms of that final spot, but. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the uh, the instance of it. But so um, going through the team list now. So, <clears throat> so we still got about forty minutes till game time, so things could end up changing. But for the Cronulla Sharks, you got William Kennedy at fullback with Ronaldo Mulatalo and Lachlan Miller on the wings. Connor Tracy and Jesse Ramian in the centres. Matt Moylan at five eight with Nico Hines at halfback. Toby Rudolph, Blake Braley, and Braden Hamlin Uele. As the prop hooker prop, Britton Nakor and Wade Graham in the second row with Dal Finucane at lock. Interchange consists of Teague Wilton, Cameron McInnes, Andrew Fafita and Aidan Tolman. 
And I actually forgot to uh, write down the uh, who who is the injury replacement. I'm just going to check that now. And it's going to be Moeen Hiroti. <coughs> I'll just uh, write this down, actually, because I actually uh, haven't filled it out. Yeah, the Swans are up by 21. It should be it should be over. So the AFL Grand Final will be Geelong versus Sydney. So Moeen Hiroti, the number 22, is the injury replacement. Just need to write down the South one so I can have it all in one fell swoop. <clears throat> and there we are. Sorry about that. Alex Johnson versus Mulatalo. It's interesting because um, we'll get into it after we read out the Rabbitohs. Uh, after we read through, yeah, through the Rabbitohs lineup, because there has been a few changes in terms of um, from the uh, from the teams from last week. But uh, going into South Sydney now, Latrell Mitchell at fullback, Alex Johnson and Tarn Mill on the wings with Isaiah Tass and Campbell Graham in the centres, Cody Walker and Lock as five eight and Lockley and Ilias as halfback. Tavita Totola, Damien Cook, and Mark Nichols as the prop hooker prop. With Keon Kualamatangi and Jai Arrow in the second row. With Cameron Murray at the lock position. Cody Nikarima, Hami Selly, Michael Cheekam, and Sevilla Havili as the interchange. With Davy Mawal as the injury replacement for South Sydney. Now, <clears throat> when going into the uh, certain... In, in terms of the out, to say the least. So, Royce Hunt and Seriously for Talakai are both out. I think both picked up injuries. It was announced last night that they were out. And uh, Thomas Burgess is also out. He's actually suspended for two matches. But unfortunately, um, I don't think... Apparently not due into the will good for the... Um, for for South fans, as uh, he can't carry his suspension until next year. So... <laughs> So Burgess will be pretty much out until the grand final if South Sydney make it that far. I think it's two, I think it's a two week suspension, I believe. Um, in complete honesty, out of all the play, I thought Tarn Milne would probably be one who would be out. Sutley and Porter, it's up to it's up to everyone really. How are we all doing on this uh, late Saturday night? I think the AFL game should be done. The twenty second minute, the game has to be close or over. The Swans are up by twenty one. So we can probably focus and go in. Um, there is going to be a little bit of a little few differences I've added for this stream. I've actually got video previews. Basically, what it is is like because obviously being in the sort of pre-stream for about forty-five minutes before the game starts, potentially was going to be a lot of dead air. But I what I do have is I've made these like sort of little snippets of videos, basically to explain to go into previews for like each team. And uh, my prediction of what I think is going to happen tonight, but um, obviously, obviously we'll get learn much into it. But um, I, I might just need to say how good the the final series has been so far for the NRL. I mean, besides from last night's game, obviously all the games have been relatively close. It's just, it's um, all the games have been in, impactful. I mean. The South Roosters game last week is arguably one of the best finals games I've ever seen. I see you, yeah, Troll. But, um, yeah, I don't know how this is going to sound because when you click off it, so you probably might be hearing audio. So I'll just do this quickly. Out of all the teams that made the top eight, the... so you probably did hear that, but for some reason, I on my Streamlabs, I can't hear it, but I can see that the levels are being seen. So, um... So pretty much, I've got a preview for the for the Cronulla Sharks, a preview for South Sydney, and then I've got the prediction. I, I know I probably should have added a little bit more, since I was going to be here for a um a substantial amount of time. But um, I feel like uh, for the early viewers, might as well um get into it. So this right here is my sort of minute preview for the uh the Cronulla Sharks. Out of all the teams that made the top eight, the Cronulla Sharks would easily be the one that hasn't gotten as much media attention as some of the other teams. They just stuck to their guns and just played consistently good football, earning them second place. 
Their finals journey would begin as they took on the North Queensland Cowboys, a team that were battling it out for that second spot for a chance to host a preliminary final in week three. Punch for punch, blow for blow, any point that was scored by one team was instantly met by the other. And it was almost the Cronulla Sharks victory until a last minute try by Jason Tamalalo would send the match into extra time. After 93 cruel and enduring minutes, the North Queensland Cowboys would pluck the heart out of the chest of the Sharks, but they get a second chance here taking on a beaten and potentially battered South Sydney Rabbitohs. With a shot at playing Penrith in the preliminary final, this is the chance they can use to put them in that position. Okay, so I just had to like click on to the, um, to the stream on my phone because I am that self-obsessed, but... Um, yeah, it does, it, the audio did work on it, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. Not really much. Basically, I was looking for doing some sort of slideshow because obviously um, YouTube's a little bit sus when it comes to using NRL footage. And usually, what I just did was the NRL on their website usually put up like photo compilations, like just basically just all the photos of the best ones that were snapped during the... Uh, the weeks of action i just want to bring into one photo because some of them are actually really good i'm just um this one will be shown in the south sydney one i'm just gonna find it here because of how good some of these shots are so this is the uh the shot that i saw here and it's um like that's if that isn't like a thumbnail for like an entire documentary on latrell mitchell i don't know what is like that is a that is an absolute beauty of a shot there to say to say the very least but um what what is what has happened oh it, okay yep Cornell. oh my god colin would have scored two goals um <laughs> the game is still going hang on i might need to clock onto this because colin would have actually scored two goals and it's still going i thought it was done um this is um You'll probably hear a cheer from my family, even though this is like their first AFL game they've watched. Oh my god, there's still four minutes remaining. <laughs> there's three minutes, 46 remaining, and, and the Swans are up by now. And I'm just going to have this on in the background. I'm not going to actually... Um... Obviously, this is not the stream for the AFL, but I just want to keep an eye on this because of how... um, Because the Swans are... Oh, Collingwood's got a... Oh, the swan. Okay, the swan. Basically, the ball's just in the middle because AFL's chaos, complete chaos. But um, yeah, the Swans are up by thirty at half time, and just Colling would have just absolutely come back in this third quarter. But um, fourth quarter, I should say. But yeah, so with Cronulla, it's um, it was a really good game against the Cowboys to say the least. Defense took a little bit of a uh, a back seat to the uh, the matchup to say the least. Um. Base it, and pretty much it was just every like for example Cronulla would score a try Cowboys would score a try Cowboys would score two tries the bloody Sharks would score two tries it's just it was it was very much that kind of adage and um oh my god that's a goal okay uh Collingwood's just scored another goal and now it's uh two minutes 40 remaining and it's a three-point game Collingwood might actually win this. That's actually nuts. I mean, in fairness, like the Swans are actually about to choke this. That's actually nuts. But um, I'm a little bit of a Swans fan, but you know, it's it's like I only really watch like the occasional game. But yeah, so. Obviously, with the uh, with the Sharks' two players being out, being Royce Hunt and uh, Coc for Talakai, I think they're behind by about a couple of minutes to say the least. But um, pretty much the uh, Lachlan Miller being sent out to the wing and Ronaldo Molotalo switching to the other wings a bit of an interesting decision. Kind of Tracy starting in the centre, but it, uh, Tracy was the number two into the wing. Oh. oh, the ball's going down to the other side, and it's going to be batted away for a behind. So two minutes twenty remaining. The uh, 
Swans are up by two. They're actually going to choke this. But, um, yeah, so it, it's, it's going to be interesting because obviously South um, forward pack are very, very important. I think someone's not happy. So I don't know if I'm behind or they're behind. Yeah, but I think Collingwood might have just taken the lead. I don't get why the cunt's fucking complaining. Like, <laughs> to me, brother's like crack the shits, even though this is like the first AFL game he's probably watched the Swans all year. But pretty much, um, the forward pack, I think, is going to be a really important key there for the, uh, for, for Cronulla, because obviously, South's forward pack got absolutely battered, to say the least. I feel like, I mean, obviously, Bird just probably copped the most of it, so. Lee Potter thinking the Sharks will win this. Can you um calm the fuck down? No, you both no fuck off. <laughs> get out. I'm watching it. Get out. There's a there's 90 seconds remaining. The swans. No, they fucking got two a minute a minute and a half behind. Well, it's one oh you are okay. It's one seventeen remaining. The swans have got the ball, and they're up by two. Yeah, they fucking behind like a Swans have just got a mark just outside of the 50, so they can send... Pretty much, they just got to send the ball in and chew out as much just time as possible. Check the AFL app and they're behind. I didn't realise that. I didn't know either, because I heard... Yeah, that's what we... That's... Yeah, I just realised they're bloody behind. Yeah, okay, 50 seconds to go. They've just, um... Defence kicked it. It's not 50... 95 to 93. I don't know how the Swans have actually chewed this. I'm sorry... <laughs> Yeah, I'm live. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, we're just uh, getting a bit of distracted here. So, bit of last minute uh, com AFL streaming. So, Collingwood up. This is the first AFL up. Oh. oh, it's a big tackle. Oh, Collingwood are going down the field. Oh, no. It's clear to why the Swans here to get the, this the fuck all the way from them. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. The ball's down the ground. There's 27 seconds remaining. There's going to be a bounce up. So there's 23 seconds remaining. It's deep in Swans 50. And there's going to be a bounce up. Probably they're going to send every Collingwood player up. They just got to keep going. Whether there's 18. Okay, it's another one. 18 seconds to go. This is kind of giving me Nick Davis vibes. Why is... Clear it up. Kick. Bounce. Cleared. Nine. Eight. Seven. <gasps> it's at the post. That's, that's surely that should it. be it. That's surely it. That's surely, that's that's it. surely it. That's it. it. Yeah, but it's a boundary. That be, And it's four seconds to go. That's it. The Please. swans have held on. Please tell me that's it. That has to be it. Please tell me that's it. For the love of God. That surely is it. Tell me that's it. Just boot it. There's like two seconds to go. Just fucking tell me that's it. That's it. That's it. That's fucking it. Oh, shit, thank God. So the swans are into the grand oh, font. Why did we get they're, that? They're getting belted if they play like that. We played so well the first three quarters. Yeah, but then yes, we've played like absolute shit in the fourth. Oh my god. Oh, I had to. I ended up using the commentary without a minute to go. Okay, now we can move on to the NRL. Okay. That was the biggest disgrace of commentary I've ever heard. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we can get into the. <laughs> Bloody hell, um. So there we go, the Swans have won. I honestly don't know how they won that. They actually almost choked. <laughs> oh. But there we go. So, we're going into the uh, NRL now. I'm very sorry about that. But, um... It's going to be interesting to see how some of the streams go. Because I know... Like, you got Wolves and City tonight... At like 9.30. It's like, what happens if this game goes to Golden Point? Of oh, extra time. But anyways. Now let's go into... Finally focus on the fucking NRL. Fuck the AFL. Actually, I, I actually quite like it. But, whatever. but anyways, let's go into the preview now for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. 
Allianz Stadium was expected to be hosting a battle between two of the biggest rivals in the NRL last week, but they weren't expecting such a war to break out. The Battle of Allianz, which is looked back and credited at by historians, aka myself, please, can we, can we, can we try to push that? I mean, I, I want to have my name put to something, but, but I digress. This match showed two hated rivals lumping seven shades of ever-loving black and blue onto their opponent's faces. With eight sim bins and plenty of suspensions expected to come, it was an all-out war that South Sydney were able to win. Simply put, it was down to a battle of attrition with the amount of injuries and HIA disqualifications that were coming in for the Roosters, the Rabbitohs were keenly able to ease the game home. But you have to ask, how much of this has been taken out of them? As we all know, Thomas Burgess is going to be out until the grand final if South Sydney do make it that far. So how will their forward pack try to reach up as they take on the Cronulla Sharks? And this match will hold ever-loving more importance as this will be given a chance for South Sydney to get sweet redemption against the team that prevented them from winning a premiership last year. So yes, that is pretty much um, with South Sydney. I mean, obviously, an absolute battle. You got a question of, it's in terms of equal terms of like in not injury and st I mean yes, kind of injury, but also just kind of overall tiredness. You've got one team in Cronulla coming off ninety three minutes last week in a game which they would end up losing, and then you've got a game again in terms of South Sydney's case where. Both sides just got absolutely bruised and beaten, but South Sydney ended up winning. you got to really think that the main crux of this is going to be, like, did South Sydney play their grand final last week? In an essence, basically, they left it all on the table just for them to get absolutely slammed, but potentially by Cronulla. Kind of like in a similar situation as to Canberra playing really, like, going really well against uh, Melbourne, only to get slapped up by Parramatta the next week. But, um, yeah, I guess that's questions we're going to find out. Obviously, you got to talk about the Round 20 game. Went to extra time. I went to, went to a golden point. About three missed drop goals there by Latrell Mitchell. Uh, Thomas Burgess got sent off. It's just... You, it's, a, it's a hard game to try to distinguish what will happen. It's pretty much... Within about four minutes, to summarize in one sentence, this game is hard to predict, to say the uh, the very least. Um, going to look for an uh, add, adding up now to the poll, as we've got 11 votes now, and it is a 64% majority in favor of South Sydney to take the win and take on uh, the Penrith Panthers next week in the preliminary final. Now, I've got to figure out, actually... Because I know that um, there is there's a there's gonna be a Friday prelim final and a Saturday prelim final. I just need to try to figure out which one's the Friday and which one's the Saturday. Because I can do the Friday one, but I can't do the Saturday. So, in an essence, I'm not too sure what is um. If anybody does know, if if someone could let me know, that'd be uh very much highly appreciated to say the least. It's um. But, uh, yeah, so, it's just, I'm just going to try to find, I don't, know, I don't know, like, what do people say about this game? It's just, oh, one thing I do need to bring up, actually, is, um, some of the people, um, I saw this one thing, so, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Clarkie's Robbie League Collins, so basically, he did a post, it was, it was about, two or three days ago so i'm pretty sure though that is not it um just trying to find it here it is here so the post was was basically about the uh the south Sydney rabbitohs have been reportedly remaining intent on leaving a course stadium to make Allianz stadium their home ground and i saw this one comment from a south sydney fan this is on facebook so you can go and look at it. i'm not going to name the person but it is genuinely one of the shittest takes I've ever heard. I quite like South Sydney, but I think this guy's a bit delusional. So it says, Might as well, we are the better club, and we have been for many years. Eyes looking to the left emoji, 
laughing emoji, bunny emoji, flex emoji. Wait, don't tell me the roosters claim these grounds as theirs. Laughing emoji. Shucks. <laughs> he used shucks in a in a comment in 2022. Like, well, oh, shit. The same team that got thumped last week when it counted. Come on, guys. Haha, -ha, jokes, relax your sacks. Roosters forever in our show shadow. Hashtag S S S S T I D, which is South Sydney till I die. But uh, I think the three letters are probably reflected on the person who just commented that. But, um,. So we'll break this down. So we have been the better club for many years. Now, I do like South Sydney. I prefer them very much over the Roosters, but they haven't. I mean, the Roosters, like, they've won four premierships in 20 years compared to South have winning one in their last 50. Obviously, they've been on the... But maybe in terms of form, even still, South, Roosters have won four premierships in the last 20 years. I do understand why they do why why South the that's the only thing they wanted to break down to say the least. But um, like I do understand that South Sydney, I they need to get out of a a core stadium because in my opinion I think a core stadium is horrible for regular around football. I think it's a terrible stadium to to have a, just a regular season match. It's like um it's like for example like because I remember in the Premier League Tottenham when their stadium was getting built, they had to play at Wembley. It kind of just lessens the value of the stadium in terms of, like, importance. Because, like, the big thing is, oh, but like the grand final is at, a, is at a core stadium. But but they play there every week. And, obviously, unless it's, like, an Easter match, I think it's, like, the Easter, the Good Friday game, or if it's um against the Roosters, even if you have, like, 20,000 people there, which is a pretty good crowd for, like, regular season... Because it's at that stadium, it will just look like shit. So I do think they should move out. And I mean, like, in all honesty, I don't think it's... Like, it might as well just turn into the AFL where, like, nine of the Melbourne teams all play out of, like, two grounds. Like, I feel like that's probably should be the right move. But I did also, in terms of... So I think they should... There is also another thing that was put up in terms of stadium movement. This is actually in terms of Brisbane. It's saying... That the Broncos are set to to take up to th put three um games this year at, at the Gabba. So the Gabba, the uh the the cricket ground, uh, the AF and also the AFL ground at the Gabba. Basically, due to the fact that um in twenty in the middle of twenty twenty three is going to be the women's FIFA World Cup, which is obviously it's association it's soccer, and of uh, and Suncorp Stadium is going to be one of the main stadiums for it. So. I think I think it's the right move. I've never really liked Robbie League Grant games at those round stadiums. I think like MCG is just it's horrible to watch rectangular sports on in terms of like grounds. Like I've been there to watch like Manchester United play there. It's like it the view's okay, but it's like so much empty space to say the very least. But um I don't know. The game is gonna be an interesting is gonna be an interesting stadium to watch it from. But uh I feel like because of the rugby league, of the women's World Cup, they kind of need to. But yeah, Keener with the troll mitt two tries. I'm yeah, I'm feeling very confident in terms of uh of that prediction. I think because of the demons that may be plaguing Tr the troll Mitchell's mind from that round twenty clash against Cronulla, he just absolutely tears up this game. Maybe get a hat trick. Who knows? But um. Yeah, it's going to be hard to say. So, obviously, next week, so we're either going to be... Here's a question for the people. So, out of these two out of these two teams that are playing tonight, who do you think is more likely to beat Penrith? So, regardless of who, like, wins tonight, who do you think, like, to so say, if... Do you think if... What? Well, bloody... Just smell the... Leave the fucking door one, don't you? But anyways, it's like, do we think Souths would be the more likely to beat Penrith or what do we think go contradictory and think it's going to be Cronulla the thing is though, is when this score gets out of there these the way they've changed the NRL website's weird because um I don't know I just I don't really see Cronulla beating Penrith but then the question is is obviously who is going to beat Pen Penrith because because a lot of people I think have already just not accepted, but just have said, yeah, I think they might 
Penrith might just go straight through to the grand final. It's it's weird to say, but the Cowboys and Parramatta game, that's going to be... See, that's for sure. They know what it takes to get the job done. That is a good That is a good point. So I'm just trying to figure out here. So, this, the, so the prelim final, right? So would this be at Allianz Stadium or would this be at Blue, in, uh, in Penrith? Because... Because, I mean, regardless of who wins, it's going to be two Sydney teams. So, I mean, you might as well put it... But then Allianz, no, because it's closer to the east. So, yeah, that that's going to be a hard one to tell. I think they might just do it at Blue Bet. But then again, for security reasons, I don't think it's going to be that... <laughs> it's that great because it's basically a glorified uh, suburban ground. But I, I do like suburban grounds, but it's it's hard to... So, okay, 15 minutes to go before the game kicks off. I'm just actually going to switch over to KO right now. So, if anybody wants my prediction for the AFL Grand Final, because I'm probably not going to make a video on it. Uh, by the way, the Swans go in the, uh, in the fourth quarter. I'd like to see the Swans win, but, I mean, <laughs> I think Geelong might run away with it. So, pre-game now, Sharks, Rabbits. Oh, oh, oh that's pretty loud, sorry. Sorry about that. That was quite loud. I will actually... um. I'm just going to see what Sportsbet says. Oh, was that a new comment? Or... Oh, okay. Just going to go to uh, Sportsbet right about now. I'm just going to check to see what the current odds are. And also, there's because they have a voting system on there, so we can see what most people are going to be tipping for. Because I read on the League Live app that they're tipping the Sharks are going to win. But last time I checked, this was it was very close. It was like a like ten cents separating both teams. So here we go. So currently the mo oh wow that has taken a big change. South Sydney favourites at a dollar sixty five. Sharks at two dollars twenty five. Could that be have done because of Talakai being out or and Royce Hunt? Who who knows? But um. Okay, who will win in terms of the vote? Fifty. So there's about three, oh, just over three point two thousand votes on sports bets, and fifty five percent have gone in favour of South Sydney. Interesting. It's very interesting to say say the least. It's actually you know, so thirteen votes now coming in, and it's currently a sixty nine nice uh, sixty nine percent in favour of South Sydney to take out this win. It's um, it's 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 going to be an interesting game, but obviously I think what all, all the focus is going to be on Latrell Mitchell. He's gonna, I think he's this is going to be the game which defi probably defi not defines his career, but you know like, because obviously Latrell Mitchell didn't play last in last year's finals, and just a bit of a hot take. Um, if he did, South would have won. Bit of a shocking um. <laughs> correlation there but it's uh, I feel like obviously he saw what happened in 2021 obvi and obviously just will be enough like this is like a run that could see himself go into immortality in terms of rugby league as arguably becoming the best player in the in the league S simply as that and um and anything can happen in these types of games it's 13 on 13 like we probably saw earlier this morning in the Super League over in England with Leeds, Leeds Rhinos beating Wigan. Meaning that uh, Leeds Rhinos will be playing in the grand final. They play either St. Helens or Salford, which will probably be likely be St. Helens. But it be amazing to see if Leeds can beat St. He St. Helens, um, if the St. Helens make the grand final, because St. Helens will be going for four in a row. And people thought uh, Penrith's reign of dominance has been going on for a little too long. And then you see what's happening over in England with St. Helens. Yep, they're practicing drop kicks. So, I think also Cody Walker. I think, apart from Latrell Mitchell, I think Cody Walker is going to be a major key factor for South Sydney for them to win this game. Because of, of all the chaos that's happening, he played a very solid kicking game and just very solid all round match. Kept his head down, didn't get into trouble. <laughs> Which couldn't be said for a lot of the Souths and Roosters players that were playing in that game last week. It's just... It's just going to be absolutely... 
I think it's going to be a fantastic match. Hopefully, I think it's going to be closer, but um, so pretty much within a couple of minutes' time, we'll, I will be showing... Do I do it now? Do I show my prediction of who I think is going to win now? Um, it's about a three-minute go-around, so... Yeah, I think... Well, look, so this would be my preview for this game, pretty much of what's going to go into it, and it'll also reveal who I think will advance into the preliminary final. Trying to think for a winner in this game is probably going to be the hardest one to try to select so far this final series. Because when it came to the semi-finals that has happened, which was the Parramatta Eels and the Canberra Raiders last week, I was fairly like 70% confident that Canberra were going to lose that game. I didn't expect them to lose that badly, however. But when it comes to the Cronulla Sharks and the South Sydney Rabbitohs, this game could not be any closer out of the last sort of 23 meetings south sydney only just have a slight edge in terms of wins and i saw something crazy as well as out of all the points from those last appearances the cronulla sharks have scored 430 with south sydney scoring 440 which just kind of just kind of just kind of shows how down the middle this match is between these two teams. Obviously, when talking about these two teams, you obviously have to look into the round 20 clash between both sides in round 20. It was a very, very close affair. Ended up going into Golden Point, which was won by Nico Hines, getting the goal for the Sharks. But it's just, it's hard to say. I mean, you've got, like, Burgess also got got sent off in that game as well around that same point. It's, um... There were so many shots on goal, just very even. I feel like because of the misses in that golden point by Latrell Mitchell, you'll have obviously very much more fired up. But obviously when it comes into these matches, results don't mean nothing as we obviously saw with the round 25 match between the Roosters and the Rabbitohs and the finals match between the same clubs. It's going to be a hard game to try to split down the middle, but personally, this is my prediction. I will predict that this game will go potentially to Golden Point or extra time. But I do feel that in the end, South Sydney will be granted their chance at redemption against the Penrith Panthers. So there we go. That is my prediction. I don't know if I've just cut that off a little bit too early, but there it is. I believe that South Sydney will be advancing into the prelim final to get a chance at redemption as they would, get, obviously, in terms of the rhetoric, go on to play against the Penrith Panthers in the preliminary final. So, whilst that was going on, I was listening to what the uh, the people on um on um the Fox pre game were saying. Pretty much, Greg Alexander's gone in favour of the Sharks, going on the rhetoric of they had to come second for a reason. Basically, he's talking about the game plan that's going to be put in defensively by Craig Fitzgibbon for the Cronulla Sharks. But uh, Michael Ennis going in favour of South Sydney to take the win. Very interestingly, going against the team that he won a premiership with in his final game. That's still mental to think. Like, Obviously, completely think, oh, he's just a Bulldogs player, then goes on to Cronulla and wins a premiership. So, yep, that is my prediction there. So, we're just looking at the votes right about now. It has gone up slightly, a little bit. It's now up to 15. And it keeps going in favour of the Rabbitohs. 73% in favour. It's almost... I'm just trying to think now because if it gets another vote to South Sydney, then it's 75-25. So that would be... And it's 16 votes. So that means... Uh, it'd be 12 votes to 4. So pretty much, yeah. So currently it's 11 votes to 4 in favour of South Sydney. Now... Does that mean that set that there's just a lot of South Sydney fans that are having to click on, or it's people that actually think South Sydney are going to win? Who will actually know to say the uh, the very least? Where we've got about five minutes remaining until kickoff, so I don't know. Um, <laughs> don't go anywhere, I guess. I don't know. What do they say on those pundits? But usually they have massive amounts of ad roll to uh to hide themselves behind. Oh. It's 17 votes now. Where is it at now? It's now 76. <laughs> it's now 76 to 24. So what I think's happened, yeah. So I think it's uh the votes keep going up. There's actually 
it could end up going past the most votes I've had for a pre-game. I think it was like at around 24 or something, I think. I, I don't keep check because I don't have an ego or anything. But, uh... But yeah, just five minutes to go, so it's still pretty much three quarters of the people voting going in favour of South Sydney. It's, uh... It's going to be interesting to say the very least. Uh, this I'm, I'm not going to be doing the Super League game after this. It's just... It, I mean, like, it happens, like, the game starts at, like, I think, 10 o'clock. But, yeah, yeah, I won't. I might be doing the, um, the Super League Grand Final next week, depending on when that's on, and also whatever state I'm in, because I do have a 21st I'm going to on the, uh, the Saturday, the 24th, and I don't know if I'll be, uh, on this level of consciousness if afterwards, but, uh, yeah, who knows? Oh, there we go. Just spread apart. I might just drag that in a little bit. There we are. Just trying to see if that's cutting. No, oh, that's all right. Yeah, we can. We can deal with it, but there we go. So we're very close now, just after these last couple of adverts. Also, um, I know Paul Gallen did fight uh, not that long ago. Um, for those who watched it, if any of you did actually watch it, uh, how did he go? Did he go okay? Was it like, obviously he was fighting against people that weren't properly training? I don't know. If anyone did watch it, to say the least. But anyways... Very close to kick off now. So yeah, Matt Nables now doing the commentary. So we're about to get ready to start off this game at Allianz Stadium, not at Shark Park. Apparently sold out is as far as I've heard, so. So I hope everybody's excited. Get your popcorn or whatever food is served at at stadiums. Should also state no game footage will be shown during this match because of copyright reasons. Surely Hectic Fred would be streaming, so he usually is able to show them because he's on Twitch. So you go to him. Big trail, the trail mitt. His try neck last week when he was his South were down to eleven, that was nuts. Oh no, they just showed Talakai. They don't know they didn't know he's not playing. So pretty much the Rabbitohs or the the Rabbitohs are pretty much if they win, and potentially if they make this the uh, the the prelim at Alliance, that makes their entire run would be at Alliance minus the grand final because obviously that's going to be at ANZ. But both teams now in the huddle. Winner goes on to face Penrith in the prelim. Loser is eliminated from the finals. Sharks hoping to not end up like the Melbourne Demons in the AFL, losing both finals games, seeing them out of the competition. But uh, we're getting close now, so we'll just go through the lineups quickly once more. For the Cronulla Sharks, William Kennedy at fullback, Renato Mulatalo and Lachlan Miller on the wings of Connor Tracy and Jesse Ramian in the centres. Matt Mullen at 5'8", Nico Hines at halfback. Ru Toby Rudolph, Blake Braley, and Braden hamlin Uwele out to see prop hooker prop. Britton Accor and Wade Graham in the second row, and Dal Finucane as lock. Interchange consists of Teague Wilton, Cameron McInnes, Andrew Fafida, and Aidan Tolman with Mawini Hiroti as the injury replacement for Cronulla. And for the South Sydney Rabbitohs, Latrell Mitchell at fullback, Alex Johnston, and Tarn Milne on the wing with Isaiah Tass and Campbell Graham in the centres. Cody Walker at 5'8 with Lachlan Ilias at halfback. Tavita Totola, Damian Cook and Mark Nichols as the prop hooker prop. Keon Kualmatangi and Jai Arrow in the second row with Cameron Murray at lock. Interchange consists of Cody Nikarima, Hami Semi, Michael Cheekham and Saliva Havili with Davey Mawal as the injury reserver. South Sydney now walk out onto Allianz Stadium where they won a war last week, and hopefully not to the same extent of a war this week, but obviously one to get the same result as well. So, poll's going to be ending in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
19 votes have come in. Thank you all very much to anyone who has voted. And it has gone very much in favour of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. 79% in favour compared to the Cronulla Sharks, 21. And now the Cronulla Sharks now walking out. So that is, I believe, is Dale Finucane. No, that's not Dalfa Nuka. That's uh, number 12. That's Wade Graham leading the Sharks out. Just trying to see what the crowd is at the moment because um, you don't know how much of it is split because usually that the crowd just sort of mingles, to say the very least. So, currently at the moment, in terms of the lining up, it looks like South Sydney will be kicking off the uh, the ball, and it'll be South, the Cronulla Sharks receiving the ball first off. So, here we go. Winner takes on Penrith in the preliminary final. And the whistle will go up. And we are underway as South Sydney kick off this second semi final this week. Then come the Sharks straight up with the runner. That's, that's Hamlin Uele coming in to replace one of the uh, Shark players that were out. That'd be Royce Hunt. He'll get to the 15 for the first tackle. Very much trying to remember when these two teams did play each other in the finals. It must have been a quite a, lo a while ago, to say the least. Now, third tackle there for the Sharks. Now, on to the th 25. They're going to spread it now to the right-hand side. Nice start so far. Very much so. As for Nukin being held up, he'll be dragged back all the way to the 30 now for the fourth tackle. Offload there by the Sharks. And they're still running it into the middle. And they get onto the 40. That's William Kennedy. And that'll be the last tackle for the Sharks as they go to kick. Tries to kick for a 40-20. And that is picked up by, you can hear the boos. Who else? Latrell Mitchell onto the 25 for the first tackle. Now, he has been complaining about the abuse he has gotten. But um, obviously being compared to, in comparison to Adam Goods, who suffered racial abuse, where... Latrell's only really getting just regular abuse, but uh, against Cronulla, he probably will get the racial abuse to say, um, the least, unfortunately. And that's, oh, that could be a penalty here. And it's a penalty, yep, the South Sydney. Obviously, Cronulla do not want this to end up kind of like last week with the Roosters of just constant high shots and losing their core. It's number 11 there. That is Britton Nikora who gives away the penalty. Right about on halfway, so a kick into touch. 30 metres out, full set of six, and the, sh the uh, Rabbitohs will have the first chance of the attack. As That's Mark Nichols, who will get the first hit up and will get brought down 25 away from the try line. That's a short pass down the line. That's got to be Tavita Totola, one of the standout players for South last week. Onto the 15 now, Nichols again with the ball. And he'll go inside of the 10. Five metres away from the try line. Third tackle for South Sydney. The push down to the right, but it's a flat pass. And it gets instantly met up by the tackle there. So that's going to be Jai Arrow there. Oh, it's Cameron Murray, actually. He's so still five metres there. Fourth tackle. Short ball. Spin. And that should be a try to South Sydney. And I think it is Mark Nichols, who's had about four carries within the opening two and a half minutes. And just like that, South Sydney draw first blood. So there we go. First good, proper good bits of attack. There's a flat pass there to Nichols. Spins around and is able to get the grounding. The ball does come out. We're just going to see that just the, the ever-loving angle to prove that he has gotten the ball down. Oh, yes, he's got that. So there we go. Three minutes gone already. Straight off that penalty, South make him pay. Yep, try has been confirmed. So there we go. First blood to South Sydney. Mark Nichols, who I've been calling Mitch Nichols for the last two years. 
But it's it's certainly Mark. Only his seventh career try. His first of the season. And he gets it here. And Latrell takes the kick straight over the dot. And it'll be 6-0 for South Sydney. So, okay. Very quick start. It's actually a really good pass there from Damien Cook. Almost gets his arm swatted there by the... Uh, by the tackling Sharks player, but able to just get right, right it through. Mark Nichols with the spin and gets the easy grounding. It's a beautiful start. Sup Hill Fries. Good luck. Good luck next week against uh, the Cowboys. You, uh, just congratulations. You finally have broken the uh, you've broken the streak. Um, it's very good to see. Almost a very deep kick there by Cronulla. Almost forcing South to potentially go over the line there, but he's taken up. Oh, it's a knock-on. It's a knock-on by South Sydney, five metres away from the try line. So there's a huge chance here for Cronulla to, to hit to get a try as well. Is So it's the tackle here. Tavita Totola, yep, that ball's popped out. It was Hamlin Uelo coming in as the second tackler who's forced the mistake. So ten metres out and a full set of six, a chance for Cronulla to instantly respond. Because with the amount of mistakes that did happen last week, it wasn't really many of them that were actually punished. So, But the way that the, the theme is at the moment, that could change. Sharks now go to the right-hand side. Almost break through the gap there, but it's going to be first tackle five metres out. Flat pass to Hamlin Uelo, the guy that forced the error from South Sydney. And he's going to be held up right on the line for the second tackle. Sharks will go to the right-hand side again. Is That is Matt Moylan. Gets brought down two minutes short line. They're going to spread it now to the middles. They've been attacking the far right. Call them Antifa. And that's going to be the fourth tackle there for South, for the Sharks. Ten metres out. Right in the middle of the dot. They'll go to the left. Nico Hines. With the ball. And he's going to get held up again now. Ten metres out from the trial line. Last tackle for Cronulla. They're going to spread it to the right. It's going to be a kick over the top by Moylan. It's caught. Pass back. Picked up. It's still going to be last tackle. Sharks thought there was a touch there by the South player, but it's going to be last tackle. But it's going to be a changeover for South. Very good defense there, which would definitely be the game plan going into this. Oh, the Sharks are challenging this immediately to see if there was a touch, uh, basically a, a touch by a Sharks player, by a South player. But you know what I mean. So let's have a look. It is caught by a Sharks player from the kick, and he passes it backwards. Bounce. Oh, did Cameron Murray touch that? That's one-on-one. -on -one. And he does try to reach for it, so he's playing at it. They're going to check this, because it could be... An, it, Murray's touched it first. Yep, Toby Rudolph gains possession. That's played at, so the challenge will be successful. So it'll be a six more being resulted there for the Sharks. That is a big, that's a perfect use of the challenge. And they'll get it back. So five and a half to go. Another set of six right on the line here for the Cronulla Sharks. And it'll be a zero tackle as well. So now the Sharks with the ball. They're going to feed it now into the middles. That is Hamlin Uele again with the ball. Trying to get some of the... Uh, the uh, method from um, from Mark Nichols. So first tackle. They're going to shift it off to the left now. Nico Hines with the ball over the top to Lachlan Miller. Miller. Oh, it's been knocked down. There should be another six more because that was completely whacked by Tarn Milne. Yeah, the, Sh the Souths are trying to go for a strip here. They've just slotted the ball away. Trying to split the ball away because Tavita Toll has been very much hands around the ball. Ten metres out now. Second tackle for Cronulla. Shifting it off to the right-hand side now. Hines, they get a pass out. There's numbers. It's going to run all the way to Mulatalo, who will get dragged back to the 20 for the fourth tackle. So good defense so far now by the by Souths. Rudolph with the run. That's a good carry. And will get onto the 10-meter line now for the last tackle for the Sharks. Now to the left, Moylan. Oh, it's a pass out to the wing. And Miller can't grab it up, and he's lost it. 
the pass couldn't have been better. But Lachlan Miller's position was a bit off, and it's a knock on. So South Sydney do hang on to from that pressure. So I'll get onto the ten. I don't care who wins this because they're going to get smashed by Penrith. I mean, yes, that's probably what's going to happen, but let, let us dream. <laughs> let us dream, Hill Fries. So we're on the 15 now for the first tackle for South Sydney from that changeover. Damien Cook now going straight from dummy half, gets to the 25 for the second tackle. Now onto the 35 for the third. It's just a decent bit of running here by South Sydney. Haven't had the ball for the last couple of minutes. Now Kuala Matangi getting his first carry. Another crucial player in the win last week against the Roosters. It's a fourth tackle just shy of halfway. That's Cameron Murray now fainting a dummy but going into the middle. 45 away from the try line now. This will be the last tackle for South Sydney. And there's the kick by, I believe, Cody Walker. And it's taken by Ronaldo Mulatalo. Oh, and it'll be brought down on the 15 for the first tackle for the Sharks. As we are now eight minutes gone in this semi-final match. Sharks now on the 20 for the second tackle. That is number three of Jesse Ramian. Good run by Lachlan Miller. They're getting brought down onto the 25 for the third tackle. Now the Sharks are trying to find a way into the middle. They're going right into... The center is that's Toby Rudolph. He gets brought down the 30 for the last. That's for the fourth tackle. It's going to be interesting to see how the wings will come into play because I feel like most of the attack is going to come through the middle. As last tackle here, 40 for, on the 45. As there's Nico Hines with the kick. And it is taken by Alex Johnston. It's going to be an interesting battle to say the least. Mulatalo against Johnston. In terms of the battle of the wingers. Now Isaiah Tass with the ball. Good run. He gets onto the South 40 for the second tackle. The trail right at dummy half. Gives the ball off to Giant Arrow. Right on halfway for the third tackle. The Tola now onto the 40 now. 40 meters away from the trial line now for the fourth tackle. South now going to the right hand side. Campbell Graham with the ball. Trying to find a gap, but he gets brought down 20 away from the try line. Last tackle for South Sydney. Ilias. Oh, it's a ball. He tried to flat ball, and there's a moil, and it was right in the middle of that, and he's able to pick it up. So a bit of a lackluster end of that set for South Sydney, and now the Sharks will have the ball. So now that's Jesse Ramian again now with the ball as he gets brought down on the 30 for the third tackles. We're about to cross past the first 10 minutes, which have gone infinitely quicker than the first 10 minutes in uh, last week's game between the Roosters and Souths. That was... Oh, another big bounce. Mulatalo's running down the line. He goes to the grow and he gets tackled without the ball. But he gets picked up by Latrell. And Latrell's now running down the wing. And he gets instantly met up. And he's going to get a brilliant offload off before he goes into touch. How the hell did he get that ball out? That is brilliant from the mitt. The troll mitt. So first tackle there for Alex Johnston right on halfway. It was a good bit of play there by Mulatalo. But just the troll picking it up. And somehow wrapped around by three sharks. And was able to get that offload off. And Cameron Murray now with the ball gets to the Sharks 40 for the third tackle. They're going to go, oh, the ball's passing's been a little bit shaky in the last couple of minutes. Now it's to be fourth tackle for South Sydney, 30 out. Latrell will give it to Mark Nichols. And Mark Nichols will go straight for himself, straight to Hamlin Noelle and Rudolph. So 25 out, last tackle now for South Sydney. They'll go to the shorter left side. Cody Walker with a kick over the top. It'll be a 20-meter restart. There was good jockeying there. It was a good idea by Cody Walker. Just a little too much on it. So, seven tackle set. Now incoming for Cronulla. That's going to be the number two. That's Connor Tracy who takes the opening hit up on the zero. It's so around the 35 is the first official tackle off the set. Dalfanuka with the ball. I think that's his first carry of the match so far. Now the Sharks just shy of halfway for the second tackle. So this is potentially a good chance to uh, formulate of attack if they can get into to deep of South's territory. So that's Matt Moylan now on the South's 40 for the third tackle. 
Now Nico Hines with the ball. Gives it off to Rudolph. And Rudolph will get brought down on South 30 for the fourth tackle. Now 12 minutes gone. Moylan with the ball. Fains the pass. That's a brilliant tackle by Campbell Graham. Timed to perfection. 25 metres out now. Last tackle for Cronulla. Now Hines with the kick. And it's a bit of a high bomb. And Latrell's taking it. Lucky the Sharks can give away a penalty for tackling Latrell in midair. But just a brilliant run off the line for Campbell Grain to instantly meet William Kennedy in the tackle. So now the uh, so now we're just coming into it at the moment as the South Sydney now get to the twenty for the third tackle. So a bit of a, I think this is basically a set for South to pretty much catch their breath, getting ready for the the attack from Cronulla. Call him a tangy near the ball. Is that a knock on? Yes, it is. It's a bit of an unfortunate mistake there for South Sydney. So the Sharks will get the ball 35 away from the try line. Tavita Totola is saying to go for the two. <laughs> <laughs> he's just holding this up. Yeah, it's a not, it's a loose carry there by um, Damian Cook. So, hopefully for Sharks fans, this pressure can lead in resulting of a try. So, 40 away it actually will be. So, Souths are currently um, a little bit uh, shaky with their completion rate. They're only 4 from 7. Only 57%. Hines now with the ball. So from the scrum feed, Ramian gets the ball back off to Hines. Hines still with the ball. And he'll get all the way to the 20 metre line for the first tackle for the Sharks. So 20 metres off the first tackle from the scrum. Now here comes Toby Rudolph with the ball. He's going to be a powerhouse here for Cronulla for, for, if they were to win this match. Now the Sharks keep on going. Brad Hamlin well eh? Will get help brought down about five short of the line for the third tackle. Now down to the faints, faints the pass there. It almost works for the Sharks as he's just short of the line. It was Moylan. Meter short fourth tackle. Now Kennedy gets it off to Nico Hines. Hines doesn't know what to do with it. Gives it back to Kennedy. Kennedy trying to go down to the left. That's almost can be can make of, a, of an obstruction there by Rudolph. And here we go. Last tackle, 10 metres out for Cronulla. Hines with the ball with the grubber kick. There's pressure and it's instantly batted away by Luttrell. So it'll be a goal line drop out to South Sydney. But it's good pressure here by Cronulla. you got to think with these errors currently coming in from the early game for South. It's giving too many sets for the Sharks, and you got to think how much will make them make them pay. So that was um, Wade Graham was going for that one. So will this be a short goal line dropout like the medal, or will this be a different one and just be a massive hit? It's going to be a short one. It's not even going to make the ten. It will. It'll be bounced, and it's picked up by Tarn Milne. But it's knocked on by Tarn Milne. So the short kick did work. But Tarn Milne has lost it. Are they going to appeal this? Did it look like it was going to make it past the 10. But the bounce did favour it. Yeah, he's lost that. So 10 metres out. And it's another set for Cronulla. So the first substitute for the match is uh, Sevilla Havili has now come on. One of the best substitutes in the game last week as he is coming to replace Mark Nichols, the try scorer. 16 tack times tackled in the opposition. 20 for Cronulla, only 4 for Seas. But here comes Cronulla now with another attack. As that is Mulatalo. He'll get... That's Ramian, actually. He gets brought down on the 10 for the first. For Nukin now, just about five short of the line now for the second tackle. Right in the middle, they'll go to the left. Moylan. Faints a fake pass. That's very close there for the Sharks. About a metre short of the line. That was Hamlin Huele. They go short again. And Graham's going to get held up about a metre short of the line for the fourth tackle. Sharks will spread it down the middle now. But the pass bounces to no one and no one picks it up. So the last tackle will be taking place 20 metres out. 
It's been a bit of a horror set here for the Sharks. Moylan now with the kick. Right to where Mulatalo is. He's taken it. Tries to get a pass there, but it was too powerful. And it'll go into touch. 10 meters out, but it was the right idea. But you got to think, that's about three or four full sets. The Sharks have had right down South Sydney's end. And again, nothing they could have... Nothing they haven't capitalized on it yet. That could be a big deciding factor when it comes into if South win this or not. But it would come into case if South did win because, you know, it's like... Cronulla just didn't took their chances. Took their chances. University student can't speak fucking English. Okay, second tackle now for the Sharks. That was Campbell Graham brought down. Now it comes Sevilla Havili. First carry since coming on to replace Mark Nichols, who was the try scorer for South Sydney. For those who have missed that, I just need to probably hover that over that. Yep, there we go. So it's sitting still for about five minutes. Now the South's going down the left hand side, which has been where most of their attacks being focused. So 40 away from the try line, last tackle. It's going to go straight to Ilias. And Lelius with a high kick. Nas West with the shut up. Okay. Penalty Cronulla. <laughs> so inside the 10 penalty there for by, by, committed by South Sydney. So Cronulla will get the ball right on halfway. This would be on Channel 9, wouldn't it? So yeah, just create a... Yeah, 9, nine now accounts where you got to get. you got to create that. If you've got no access to a television. It's a free account and you can watch the game to your heart's content. Somewhat. I don't know if you could record or anything, but... Oh, it's a knock-on by Cronulla. Got to... Uh, okay, I know who this is. Sensing a certain house in the... Uh, certain parties uh, watching this. I'm in your walls. Ow. But anyways, yeah. It's, it's a scrum feed now for South Sydney. I'm thinking I'm... I was wondering what the shut up was, but I, I know the got a got a eye problem. I know that that is somebody. It's a bit of a reference by some some woman. So now first tackle now for South Sydney, just onto the 35 for the first. That's going to be a good run there by Sevilla Havili, I believe that is him. Yes, that is him. I know my players. So South now trying to get down to the line just. 45 away from the try line for the third tackle. Gets it off. To, looked a little bit forward there, but they're going to go down the left-hand side again. It's a two-on-one if they can get spread a bit more, but he will get held up there as that is Isaiah Tass. So fourth tackle, 30 metres away from the try line, fourth tackle. And he comes just a straight run through the guts. Run by Jairo, who gets the offload off to Damian Cook. Cook, you get a pass off here. Some good play. And Sharks will get... We'll bring him down 10 metres out from the try line now. Last tackle for South Sydney. Grab a kick by Mitchell. No look. And William Kennedy will be forced to clear it away. So it's going to be a goal line dropout. Just like that. Momentum completely switching. And now it's South Sydney who have the pressure. And you got to think, with those about five or six minutes when the Sharks were constantly down the other end of the field and couldn't get anything done, South could be able to capitalise on their chances. Bit of a silly no-look kick. So here come... Oh, it's a short kick and it's, it's a grubber call on dropout. It's gone 10... Wait, what? Oh, it's a knock-on. The second short kick from the goal line dropout. And it's the second time it was regathered by the team who kicked it. And it's also the second time where they've ended up losing it 10 metres away from the try line. So basically a grubber kick there. Does make the 10. That's sort of... I think... Um, I'd challenge that, actually. I think it maintains possession there. But they're not challenging it. Interesting call here, but 10 metres out. Full set of six now for South Sydney. Chance here to extend their lead as we go... We've now entered... We've gone past the first 20 minutes of the first half. 
Cork gives it off to Graham. And Graham will be brought down five metres away from the try line for the first tackle. Just right down to the middle again, right in front of the post, as that is Sevilla Havili trying to go in. Passing on the guts again, it's Tavita Totola now coming in. It's just one-ups one footy, to say the least. Now, third tackle. Oh, Cook is going to go himself! And he's just right there, but he couldn't get enough space to put the ball down. Fourth tackle now for South Sydney. Set restart now for, for South, so they need to calm down. It's going to be Latrell. Has he got it down? I don't know. That's got to be close. I think he's going to, yep, it's officially going to be ruled as a held up, but it is a set restart. Oh, very close there to be able to hold him up. So now in comes another set for South Sydney. So Sharks now trying to hold onto their line. Kormatangi almost losing that. And it, yep, they're going to call it. Losing possession into the Sharks player. So. They're challenging it or not? No, they're not going to challenge it. Fair play. So, scrum feed now for Cronulla on their 10 metre line. But I mean, that's probably about two in a row of like one for each side of like they don't know if he actually lost it. I don't think that was, but anyways, continuing on. So we've now got 16 minutes remaining now in this first half. So that's going to be Jesse Ramian who takes the first hit up. He'll get brought down on the 15 for the first. So it's almost turning into sort of like a 90s, early 2000s finals game. Just really low scoring. It's a game of inches this probably will be. So that's number 15. That is Cameron McInnes on the field. Oh. Toby Rudolph taking the big hit there. Fourth tackle. Sharks getting some quick attack here. Nico Hines now with the ball. Flat ball to, I believe that's Connor Trace. He'll be brought down on halfway for the fifth tackle. Nico Hines now with the kick. It's a high kick, to say the least. Oh, who's that touch? There was a knock on by the Sharks. It could have been a knock on by both teams, but it's going to be on the 25. Change over here for South Sydney. So first tackle there for South Sydney and now it's on their 30. Now the second will be on their 35 as that is uh, Jai Arrow again getting involved in the sets. Now this Avili getting brought down right on halfway for the third tackle. You got tell yeah, he got held up there. Now Kuala Matangi now with the ball trying to bring it out to the right hand side will be brought down. 35 away from the try line for the fourth tackle. And they're getting it off to the left. Latrell with a long ball out to Alex Johnston. Only the, about the third. Oh, they're going to drag him out here. And he's out. And they're going to give him. What? They're giving it a penalty. <laughs> Must maybe ball carrying arm was down at some point. Maybe. I'm not too sure. But. Oh, he did call held. Yeah, he did stop, so yeah, that's fair. That's a fair enough course. So 25 out, penalty to Souths. You'd go for the try here, surely. I mean, they probably might go for the kit. No, they, yep, they're going for the try. Fair play, so 15 out. Sup, Bosky? How are you doing on this fine out? Congrats on making the prelim. So, second, to, still the first tackle, actually. That's Tavita Totola with the ball. He'll get brought down five minutes short of the line for the second tackle. 
Oh, Mitchell. That's a strip. And he's lost it. So, Latrell Mitchell. It's a game that's been a bit sloppy over the last 10, 15 minutes. Bit of mistakes from both sides. So 12 minutes 40 remaining. It's a scrum feed now for Cronulla on their 10. So very interesting. It started off so action-packed. Now nothing really has happened. I mean, both sides have gone down to each other's ends. It's not like this has been no attack, but, you know, it's just, just a bit weird, isn't it? So that's Lachlan Miller with the ball as he gets brought down onto the 15 for the second tackle. That's Toby Rudolph. He's lost that as well. <laughs> it's another knock-on. This game has just been really sloppy. So Damien Cook and Cody Walker forced the tackle that forced the mistake from Toby Rudolph. Now can we get a try here, potentially, for a chance to make it a 10 to maybe 12 point lead for South Sydney? Oh, they're playing Black Parade. I've, I've just realised what they were playing. The Black Parade by um, My Chemical Romance. Yes, I had an emo phase. But not to the extent of your day like... You know, but yeah. But uh, first second out for the South Sydney Rabbitohs as they're 15 metres away from the trial line. That was Havili who took the first run up. Now here comes the second tackle, five metres short of the line. Rabbitohs now, they're going to go to the left. Cook. Just getting the ball out to just play as I want. Jaiara now, five minutes short of the line, third tackle. Go on, take all this lovely passing play. And it's going to be Tarn Milne in the corner. So finally someone takes advantage of these plays. And there we go. It's 10-0 to South Sydney with a kick to come. Tarn Milne, who was very much... Involved in the battle last week. Gets a try. As the uh, the South faithful look happy. Because their team scored. Now they're playing the guitar solo from Stairway to Heaven. This is just my playlist. This is kind of nuts to think about. So there we go. Just good passing. Drawing in the South... From the South midfield, South, not South, but the other, uh, Cronulla midfield, to just giving all that line there for Tarn Milne. Almost puts it on the line, but he does get it down in front. Uh, Michael, oh, sup Michael and Eddie animations. So just with less than 10 to go now. A conversion attempt now for, from the sideline for the trail mitt. But it is with the South fans behind him, so. I mean, he was pr pretty. I was going to say deadly, but. Uh, don't know if I can use that word, but it was pretty lethal uh, from the uh, from the sideline conversions from last week's game. But I think it he was like six from six. He was really, really good from his conversion attempts. So here we go. Here comes Trell Mitt from the sideline as Teddy Rudolph goes behind him. As everybody records him, like Ronaldo taking a penalty in Moldova. Latrell with the kick. Oh, he's just... Oh, just beautiful boy. He's a beautiful boy. Hit 12 viewers, and it's now 12... Oh, it's, <laughs> yeah. But it, <laughs> we were at 12 viewers when he kicked it, and it's now 12-0 to South Sydney with nine minutes remaining in the first half. So currently, by the as it stands, the prelim finals will be Penrith, South Sydney, and Cowboys, Parramatta. I mean, Cowboys, Parramatta was, was already confirmed, but, you know... Continue with the merit. Now they're playing Chameleon. That's not on my playlist. So here comes the kickoff by the Sharks. That's the thing. I'm just trying to think. Where would the attacking flair come from for the Sharks? Because they haven't really had 
many cutout lines. They don't really pass to their wingers that often, but when they do, it's like they completely swarmed and not. I think Souths have just got this idea that they have to be spread out. Paul Matangi takes the ball now and he gets brought down on the 35 for the third tackle. Now right on halfway now for the uh, for the sh for South Sydney. Kimball Graham, they're going to spread it now to the left. Jayara now with the ball. Gets pass into he gets into Sharks half. So 45 away from the try line. Last tackle. Ilias there with the kick. And it's gonna be taken by William Kennedy. And Kennedy will get brought down on the 20 meter line for the first tackle. That was number 15. That was Hammy Selly who made the tackle. Now Lachlan Miller with the ball. Bounce off about three or four South players, but he'll get wrapped up on the 30 25. 25 for the uh, second tackle. And now that is Connor Tracy with the ball, and he will get brought down on the 20, 35 for the third tackle. Now they're going to go to the right-hand side now. Jesse Ramian with the ball gets brought down on halfway for the fourth tackle. So 40 minutes over the try line now from Hwelle's tackle. Here's the kick from Nico Hines. That's going to be taken by Johnston. So he gets brought down the 15 meter on 15 for the first tackle. Now got less than seven minutes remaining in this half, and oh, hang on, there's a problem here for the sh for Cronulla, not Cronulla, South Sydney. As one of their players is coming off limping with two trainers, I think that was um, Sevilla Saliva Havili. Okay, so the okay, so the Friday. No oh wow, wait, what? So it turns out, so the Friday prelim is. Cowboys Parramatta but the pre oh is that a knock on by oh Cronulla's got the ball but they're just saying that the Penrith against either Cronulla or South is the Saturday prelim but it's at a core stadium can we just fucking I mean to be fair it'd probably be a decent crowd number that we will get but yeah there we go so set restart here for the Sharks as well so 15 out first tackle that's number 14. That's Teague Wilton. And he'll get brought down on the 10 meter line now. So, second tackle now for the Sharks. They'll put it into the middle as Hines gets rid of it. And he'll be given to the number 19 of Aiden Tolman. Seems that within the next last couple of minutes, the Sharks have swapped on to their um, reserve players. Oh, the pass back has gone. And Johnson's picked it up. And it's a running race here for Souths. But there's a lot of Sharks swarming to get him. I don't know who that is who's picked it up. It is Cody Walker, actually. So, 25 out. And it's a that was the first tackle. So, here comes South Sydney. The Sharks players all desperately trying to get back. And South will get brought down. Second tackle, 15 away from the try line. Now, South. Oh, beautiful dummy by Latrell. But he, oh, he's lost it. And after all of that, Latrell ends up losing it. Trying to get an offload on the ground. But it's gone from one end of the field to the other. The tip pass not going well. Picked up by Johnston and given to Cody Walker. But all of the Sharks fast players coming after him being Mulatalo, Hines. And I believe it's also Lachlan Miller was going after him. Unlucky there for, Matre for Latrell trying to get a pass out. But it was a player's leg that blocked it. Is someone bleeding? It's a lot of blood on one of the uh, Sharks' uh, back of their thigh, but it's clearly... That's not... That's not... I, I just pointed to the back of my shin, and I said that's the thigh. Just shows how much I know about the human anatomy. anatomy. Can't even say it. So, Nico Hines gets brought down for, on, from the first tackle on the scrum feed on the 15. Now, have got four minutes, 20 remaining reference uh so onto the 25 now for the second which is uh jesse ramian sharks getting a line break there but that's a big wrap up there by isaiah tass just shy of halfway for the third tackle so that is number 19 that's aiden tolman now 45 away from the trial and for the fourth tackle nico hines will feed it off to moylan 
Kennedy with the ball. Kennedy will go himself. Gets a pass out to Miller. Miller with the step. And Sharks will be brought down 10 metres short of the line for the last tackle. Here we go. Hines with the ball. Goes for a little kick. And it's almost taken by the Sharks. But it was Mulatalo. And it'll be a 20 metre restart. Mulatalo going off there trying to, I don't know, say something. But South hang on. Because you also got a... Wait, it's a goal line. Oh, they're trying to say if it's a goal line. Drop out. Playing straight lines by cold Not cold I'm actually useless. Not cold played silver chair. Wait, it's a goal line dropout. No, it's not. It's a 20-minute restart. Yeah. Well, they, oh, they, I think they might have originally ruled it was a goal line dropout, but no, it's a 20-minute restart. So, 2 minutes 50 remaining in this first half. If Seattle can get another try here, that could be uh, pretty damaging for Cronulla. So, this will be the first actual tackle from this 7-tackle set. And it's a set restart as well. Now, it's a penalty because it's inside the 40. You remember the rules, Atkins. Grant. Yeah, me and Grant go way back. So, there's another Grant. I see you. Anyway, so here comes the, uh, the penalty kick here from Latrell Mitchell. This will probably be the last full set South Sydney have in this first half. Ball will be placed 35 away from the try line. Just under two minutes remaining now in this first half. Now it's going to be a wrap up there on Hamiselli. He hasn't been held. He's gone the offload off. Jai Arrow now getting... The first tackle will be brought down on the 20 for the first tackle. So here we go. Murray. Oh, it's a three on three. Campbell Graham tries to get a pass off. Oh, that's a big high nice shot there. Not back by the Rabbitohs and it's... Wait, whose ball is it? It's a... So I think it's actually going to be... I think it's a changeover. I think it's for South. So I think... Is it a changeover? Yeah, it's a, it's a penalty Cronulla. No, it's a penalty South. <laughs> There's an offside penalty because the Sharks player was off. Okay. But they just popped up with penalty Sharks. In turn, press the button wrong. So here we go. So that is Hamiselli now. Five metres short of the line for the first tackle. So less than a minute to go. Can South get another try? Now that's uh that is Murray. Five short of the line, another pass here. Oh, and again, just about a meter short of the line now. Third tackle for South Sydney. Cody Walker with the ball. We'll feed it off to Cameron Murray. And Murray's about 15 meters back. And Murray's just broken through by himself. That was so easy. He just beats off the player. Not in that way, but uh just Bends him off and just scores probably one of the easiest tries he will score in his career. It's now 16-0 with a kick to come. And that will be the end of the first half. So we'll go into the sheds 18-0 for, for the South Sydney Rabbitohs. This is um this is not looking good for Cronulla. We could experience like another semi-final where it's an absolute bollocking. There we go. The sign rule stand. It's just a just a chip kick here for Latrell Mitchell to make it 18-0 to South. It's just again, it's like a, just got to say, bloody Sharks had about five to six minutes in the earlier part of the game, just constant sets and pressure put on South's line, but couldn't get anything done. And now look at the score now, and it's about to be 18-0, right on half time or on half time, pretty much. So here we go. Latrell Mitchell with a kick over the top. And so here comes Latrell. Right in front of the South Sydney faithful. And he gets it over. So at half time, the score is Cronulla Sharks nil, South Sydney 18. And you got to think, like, both games has been equally sloppy for both sides. But it's just... 
Seattle have been able to actually use their chances. It's quite it's quite interesting to see here. So there we go. That is that's the end of the first half. So 18 0 to South Sydney. So what can you say? It's just been it's just been pretty decent to say the very least. Like I, I'm not. It's weird. It's like I'm acting like I'm in shock, but I'm. But like I did think that South were going to win this game, but it's got Sharks going to go out straight sets. It's it, it honestly looking like it. It's turning into they're basically turning into the Melbourne to the to the Melbourne Demons in the AFL where they lost both both finals. It's I mean you got to think right. They were second, the Cronulla Sharks, but. It's like they haven't had really much focus on them. It's like I think I think I was talking to, to people, like I was talking to like my brother and all that about how on how the Sharks have been like not the least deserving because they've been playing good football, but it's like how are they second kind of thing. It's like you'd expect in terms of performances, you'd be expecting teams like South Sydney or fucking I don't know, like Parramatta or something like that to be coming second, but no, it's Cronulla and Unless they change something drastically in the second half, they're about to lose two finals matches in a row and be knocked out of the uh, the finals race. It's um, it's mental. So, so I'm just trying to think now. So currently, from the so we'll have first, third. So it'll be first, third, seventh, and fourth will be remaining if the scores obviously stay the same. It's um, man. Uh, what's what's a poll we can do for halftime? Um, I mean, it's gonna be a bit simple, but um, I think it's, I I, I think I know what the result's gonna be, and I know it's gonna be like a majority uh thing, but it's uh. I already know what the result's gonna be. It's gonna be a massive resounding in one favor. But there we go. It's like. Does anybody actually think the Sharks can somehow mount a result to make this game competitive? Because it's just definitely not looking like that currently in the circumstance. It's... I'm just a bit flabbergasted, to say the least. So, um, in terms of people wanting to look into who has scored. So, the first try was scored by Mark Nichols. Within about two minutes into the match, it was just a very... Simple bit of play. Nothing happened for about 30... I should just go to the timeline. Read that off. 29th... So, second minute, Mark Nichols went over. Tan Milne scored in the 29th minute. And right at the 39th minute, Cameron Murray scores probably one of the easiest tries he will ever score. Like, it was actually pretty silly on how easy it was. He just got the ball into the 20. Fends off one South player. Runs through a massive gap. Runs through... Like, fends off a Cronulla player. Runs through like a massive gap, doesn't even get touched, and just goes over. It's just, I don't know. Currently, with the votes, two votes have come in. One person has said yes, they will. So we found somebody who will, and the other one has said no. Up oh, now, now the other votes are starting to come in. It's now two to one in favour of a no. But yeah, it's just, um, I just don't know. I'm just a bit shocked. It's like... It's like all of the games in the Illumination final were all very competitive. And now the semi-finals have been a bit... Have been a bit, a bit bollocking. It's, uh... What can you say? Um, no, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Um, What do I talk about here? How do I fill out the game? I didn't have anything at halftime prepared. Um... What do good YouTubers do during this period? I've got to think. What do I what do I do? Get, someone give me ideas of things to talk about. Because <laughs> I pretty much just ran through the game. Because there was a lot of errors from both sides. So not really much full-on attacking. But it's just South have been able to take their chances. And Cronulla haven't. That's pretty much been the basis of it. Um. Now coming in at five votes. Let's see. I think it's probably four to one. It's three to two. Okay, so people are, are saying there is a 
a minority of people saying that uh, South si that the uh, Cronulla Sharks can come back. But yeah, a bit of a hard, bit of a hard way to uh to seeing what's uh, going on. Oh, yep, the votes are now coming. Now it's uh, four to two in favour of the uh, of no. The Sharks will not mount a comeback. I'm just trying to see if anything has been said, but it's just I don't know, buddy. But the, well, the way things are going. Pretty much the way I see it, the uh, the the South Sydney Rabbitohs have got one hand, or one foot inside of the uh, of the preliminary final, and will take on um, and will take on uh, the what whoever the fuck they're called the bloody what <laughs> I'm blanking the the take on Penrith that's it Man, that bloke really just documented war and peace of his fucking Insta, of his uh, Snap story. That one, DJ Khaled. Um, but yeah, so that is the... Uh, I have to make a halftime side. I've got nothing really to talk about. I think we could all use this somewhat as a breather. So... Just gonna edit something quickly, just a little bit of slides so we can spend the next like five or so minutes. Just to catch our breath and we should be and we will be back for the uh, for the second half. Okay, we'll put that in. We just gotta get a little you know, a little cheeky uh cheeky MB4 of like that moving background. I've been using that black one. I think it's a pretty cool moving background to say at the very least. Yeah, we'll loop it. Just trying to find it now. Oh, it's not there. Um, I don't. I might just transition and just play music. But yeah, we'll be back in a couple of minutes when the second half does start.
Okay, there we go. So we are back now for the second half. I feel like that second half, the halftime break went pretty quick as a shot. Both teams are actually back out already. So here we go. The Sharks will be kicking off. They'll be running screen left, and the South Sydney Rabbitohs will maintain possession. So in terms of the votes, 11 votes came in. It is a 6-5 to five in favour of no. The Sharks will not come back. But a sizable minority is saying they will. So here you go, kick off, and we are underway for the second half. There's the first hit up there for South Sydney as they get to the 15 for the first tackle. In a game like this, it, with the uh, in a second half, pretty much second half like this, it's very, very crucial for the Sharks to get the first try. Jaira getting to the 20 for the second tackle. Yeah, here comes Kualamatangi. We'll get to the 30 for the third tackle. Oh, and the ball's been lost by South Sydney there. So the Sharks will get a zero tackle 45 away from the try line. So they want a chance to come back. This is where you can start it from. So that's Molotala who will get the carry for the first tackles. The 40 away from the try line. Now Dalfinukan. Now Hines. Gives it off to Moylan. To Kennedy. And Kennedy will get brought down 25 away from the try line for the third tackle. Now Hines. Gives it off to the number 15 of Cameron McInnes, who's now 15 metres away from the try line for the fourth tackle. So Hines now with the ball. Flat ball. Out to Connor Trace, but instantly met by Campbell Graham. So here we go. Last tackle now for Sharkies. High kick there from Hines. Batted backwards. And that's going to be a try to Cronulla. It's number 11. It's Britton Nakora. Who's gone the uh, the bat the bat back by one of the Sharks players. And he's run into the corner. And just like I said about a minute ago, it is... A very crucial they got the first try and just like that within two minutes they have so there we go is Molotala who knocked it back and Britton Nakora gets the first try for the Sharks in this game and that's the thing that can help Cronulla get back into this is like as Greg Alexander just stated is obviously the uh, South need to clean up their um their, their set completion because it's not looking good there we go. Brilliant bat back there by Ronaldo Molotalo. And it is taken by Britton Nakora, who will make it 4 points 18 with a kick to come. Six tries in the past five games for the uh, for the second row. Britton Nakora has been a bit of a scoring machine this season, to say the very least. So here we go. Here's a conversion attempt now. This to make it a 12-point lead. Here's Nico Hines. He's going to curl it back. He just sneaks it in. Very, very close from smacking the post, but he just about gets it. And it's going to be 6 points to 18 after 3 gone in this second half. It's going to have to move this here quickly. Just to... Oh. Yep, that is. That's all they need. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much all you need. Is just get the first try, and you can build on the momentum from that. So here comes the kickoff from South Sydney, and now here come the Sharks. And that is Aiden Tolman who takes the first hit up onto the fifteen. So there we go. Saliva Havili has suffered a calf injury, and they said he's out for the game. Attention on, by the way, it's going even if South, if South Sydney do advance, there is a possibility that he may not play, maybe even for the rest of the season, maybe. There's only about two weeks left if they make it to the grand final. So number 14 there for the Sharks, it's Teague Wilton, who will get right to halfway for the last tackle. So giving off to Nico Hines. 
And there's that's a massive kick. And it's too massive as it will go straight over the dead ball line. It'll be a 20 meter restart for South Sydney. It was the right idea to get the ball down into the... But it's, it's a massive kick, to say the least. It's about a 60-meter kick. Well, from the bounce, it was about 40, 50. Yeah, probably about a 50-meter kick. So it's number 16 there. That is Michael Cheekham with the ball, who gets the first tackle from the... Uh, that looked like a bit of a, um incorrect play of the ball, but it's not called upon. Second tackle now for South on halfway. Kuala Matangi now with the ball as he'll get brought down on Cronulla's 40 for the third tackle. Cronulla need to keep their defence strong. That's what they need to do if they want to come back because, like they said, South took their chances last, uh, last half. Oh, Campbell Graham now with the ball. Faints passing. Oh, they've got beautiful passing again. Milne. Oh, to try. And it's Lachlan Elias just like that. Cronulla instantly fire back. Not Cronulla, South Sydney. Shit. Bit of craziness as, as Cam... I need to process this. It's 2260 South Sydney. Campbell Graham gets the ball from a, from a great pass from Luttrell. Faints passing. Pass on the inside to Luttrell. Passes to Tarn Milne. He then gets another offload off to Lachlan Ilias. And gets the try. And there we go. Lachlan Ilias makes it 22 points to 6 with the kick to come. That's uh, not what Cronulla wanted, to say the least. Rabbits back at it again. Yep, it's... Uh... So there we go. Lachlan Ilias... With his sixth try of his career. In his first season, I think, in the NRL. 26 games, I think it's his first. I don't know. There we go. Brilliant play by South Sydney. Now in comes Latrell for the conversion. And he gets it. And he goes, puts the arms up right to the Cronulla fans at that end and just simply goes, are you not entertained? Because it also is a reference to Russell Crowe, who's a supporter of the team. Or is he the owner? Or is he just, is he just a supporter? I don't know. But it's a, it's a Russell Crowe slash Gladiator reference. So seven minutes gone, two tries to open the second half. 33 remaining. Cronulla need to instantly fire back again. If not, if South get another try, it could be too little too late for the Sharks to try to come back. Just want to give this opportunity to say just thank you to everybody who actually is watching this. I know it's like going watching this game, uh, doing this, starting the stream a lot earlier than usual, just trying to try some certain things. So thank you very much for um letting me just, uh, I don't know, just try to fuck around and try to put into my head that I'm somewhat competent. It's very much appreciated. But there we go. So, third tackle now for South Sydney. Is that his... Uh... Oh! And almost a break through the line for Ilias again. That was very close from being a runaway. 35 away from the try line now. No, no penalty. Cameron Murray now with the ball. It'll get brought down 30 away from the try line. And here comes Andrew Fafida. There's a kick over the top. Oh, it's almost taken. That might be a knock-on here. I'm not sure what's going to be the ruling here, but it is a knock-on by South Sydney. So the Sharks will get the ball. It'll be just a changeover on the 10-meter line here. So there we go, number two, Connor Tracy getting the first carry, who gets brought down on the 15. Now Andrew Fafida. Is that is Dale Fanukin who's coming off the field. So 
So on the 35 now for the Sharks from the third tackle. And here's another charge up. Right on halfway, fourth tackle. So gets it to number 14 of Wilton. Hines. Oh, he could have gotten the pass off, but he chose not to. Last tackle, 45 out. And here's the kick by the number six of Matt Moylan. Oh, it's a knock on by South. Oh! What a behind the back pass to Jesse Ramian and Cronulla have scored. So within th 10 minutes, three tries have just been scored. That surely, so two players went up for that. I think there was a knock on by South Sydney. But the absolute inch perfect behind the back pass. Benji Marshall, so it's picked up. Yeah, it's knocked off a South player. Who was the player who did that? Behind the back pass to Jesse Ramian. So there we go, 24 points to 10. Who is it? Who passes it? That's Britton Nakora. What a flick. That's actually a brilliant pass there by Britton Nakora. And there we go, Jesse Ramian gets the try. 10 points to 24, the kick to come. As so there's a Sharks fan with a tooth missing. Which one am I talking about? <laughs> I try to be funny sometimes. 11 tries of the season there for Jesse Ramian, but oh, just a brilliant flick pass there. Just a brilliant flick pass there by Britton Nakora. Oh, hang... Wait, what? They're checking this. Hang on. It was a knock-on... Oh, is that an offside? He's offside. Ramian's off. Uh, unfortunately, that play has to get scratched because, yep, Jesse Ramian was offside from the kick. So it's going to be no try. And obviously, he gets involved in the play because he scores the try. So it's going to be no try. The try will be taken off them. Yeah, that's um. Yeah, Cronulla didn't need that. That was uh. But still, brilliant pass by Britton Nakora. But unfortunately, that's gonna be one of the best assists that hasn't led to a try. And that's a penalty to South Sydney for the offside. So just like that, it could be a twelve point turnaround because South could go on and score in this set. Okay, interesting news here. Alex Johnston has just come off the field. And he's gone up to the tunnel. There could be a problem. So uh, there's already d doubts potentially over Saliva Havili playing next week if South hang on. Alex Johnston potentially being out, that could be massive for South Sydney going forward. Third tackle now for South. Is there 30 away from the try line? Oh, here comes the attack. Almost a breakthrough run there. So 15 out, fourth tackle for South Sydney. And it's a knock on by Cody Walker. They might challenge this, Souths. You're going to challenge it? But Cody doesn't challenge. Interesting enough, he looked, he looked pretty pissed at the decision, but he doesn't call it. Yeah, he's lost it. Yeah, he, oh, he's clearly lost it into Molotalo. I don't know why he's angry at the ref, because he's clearly lost it. So, scrum feed on the 15 now for the Cronulla Sharks. So, it's a cork, apparently, for Alex Johnston. He could still come back to this game, though, so it's not the worst news, to say the least, but got to be careful. Now, Moylan with the ball now, and he'll get brought down. Oh, good offload there by the Sharks. Tracy with the ball. Should have passed then, and Tracy, he's held. Well, it's actually just short from the line anyway, so third tackle for the Sharks, 40 away from the try line. But they've gone all the way back to halfway now from the passing. As that is Jesse Ramian 
will get brought down to the 35 for the fourth tackle. So Nico Heinz now going on a run. Almost breaks through the line. He'll get wrapped around 20 out from the try line. Last tackle for Cronulla. Gives it off to Moylan. Moylan with the crossfield kick. Caught by the Sharks. Grub a kick there by Teague Wilton. It's going to go straight out. Well, it's not a 20-minute restart. It's just to play the ball. On the 10-meter line. That Latrell instantly gets the ball. So we've officially gone past the first 10 minutes of the second half. We've got 20, just under 28 remaining. In potentially the Cronulla Sharks season, if they don't switch on. Because you've got to think, with the way things are going at the moment, if South can just get one more try, that should be it. Oh, Cole Matang with the spin there. Gets a pass off to Ilias. Ilias still with the ball. He'll get wrapped up on the 30 for the third tackle. Natan Milne will get brought down just shy of the 40 for the fourth tackle. Still inside their own half. Now here comes South. They've got... Oh, don't really have the numbers there. So, South now, last tackle, just on halfway. Elias doesn't know what to do. They're trying to get a pass off. Joy Arrow will take the kick, and he's levered that. Will it stay in? It will just about roll out, so it's going to be a 20-minute restart. Interesting effort there by Joy Arrow. I mean, he just, oh, I'll just kick it. So, seven tackles set now for the Sharks. Arrow lost his kicking license, pretty much. On the first tackle for the... Sh zero tackle for the Sharks, actually. He's brought them back to the 15 from the 20-minute restart. So Mark Nichols set to come back onto the field after a very decent shift put in by Saliva Havili. So there we go. Obviously, very much keeping it safe. But Alex Johnston out for this match. Very much for safety concerns. And, oh, it's a terrible pass by the Sharks. And South Sydney have ended up with the ball 25 away from the try line for the first tackle. Tarn Mill from dummy half now. Will get brought down 10 mid. Oh. oh, he does. He lifted him, but he did bring him back level. But that was stupid. I'm trying to lift him there. Salé now 5 metres short, shorter line for the third tackle for Souths. Huge chance to potentially kill off the game. They're going to go for the passing around. Tavita Tatola's now got the ball. And he'll be wrapped up inside of the 10 now. Fourth tackle still for South Sydney. Gives it off to the right. Oh, there's a gap. Massive gap, but it just doesn't get through to cut through. I think it was Ilias again. Last tackle now for South Sydney. Down to the line. Oh, the boss is touched. And the Sharks are on the run. Mulatalo's gone. Out of all of that, Ronaldo Mulatalo runs 90 metres, goes under the black dot. That try, I don't know if they'll be taken off them. Where the rules forward. Do they call the try? Okay, they're, they're going to potentially review this. I don't know what happened. Ramian touches it. I don't think that's gone forward. So Ramian's touched it, then it's caught by Mulatalo. I don't think that's forward. I think that's a try. Okay, I think that's gone. I think it's gone. I don't think it's gone forward at all. There we go. Renan Molotalo has gone over, but they're going to very much check this. Let's have a look. Just shy of the 10. They went backwards. I think it's either gone... Nope, try confirmed. There we go. The bunker has awarded it. So, there we go. Ronaldo Molotalo has scored. 
And Nico Hines gets the kick right in front. So it's 12 points to 24. With 23 and a half to go, still very possible for Cronulla. Just needed a little bit of luck there and it did get given to him. Yeah, that went backwards. That went backwards by like a couple of meters. And there we go. Molotalo goes on the run. Runs to the races. So two, tr two converted tries is what separate the teams and we've got 23 and a half to go. Still a good chance though. So Nick Arimus now come on to replace Cheekam for South Sydney. Toby Rudolph now with the ball. He gets brought down onto the 30 for the second tackle. The Sharks now, with a bit of wing in their step now, you've got to think, potentially could this lead to more momentum We're getting another try. Wilton with a big charge. He gets brought down on halfway for the fourth tackle. There we go. Alex Johnson is on the bench. They're not going to risk anything. Oh, it's a run there by Nakora. Gets a pass off to Kennedy. Kennedy's still going with the ball, but it'll get wrapped up 35 away from the try line for the last tackle. Now the Sharks down the left-hand side. Kick by Moylan. There's a lot of chases. And great take by Latrell. That is a brilliant take. About four Sharks players coming in fast. This is what's going to be the next five minutes. It'll be all Sharks, I believe. Souths just need to make sure they don't make any mistakes. Campbell Graham with the ball. Gets brought down on the 15 for the third tackle. Now in comes Mark Nichols. We'll get brought down to the 25 for the fourth tackle. Potentially, if Souths want to go against the grain, they could go for a 40-20 here. So 30, on the 35 now, last tackle. Gives it off to Ilias. He's tried to go for it, but he's not going to get enough on it. He'll be taken on the 20 by William Kennedy. And Kennedy will get brought down on the 40 for the first tackle. As we now got 22 minutes remaining in this game. Hines, oh, great tackle there on Ramian. So second tackle right on halfway for, for Cronulla. Molotalo with the ball, and he'll get brought down on South 40. That's a chicken wing there. Yep, it's going to be a penalty there for, for Cronulla. That was an attempted chicken wing there. Rarely see that being called nowadays. I mean, you rarely see the tackle happening anyways. Straight into the report here is, um, yep. Molotalo clutching at his arm, but he seems to be okay as the trainer came on. So here we go. 30 away from the trial line and a full set of six now for Cronulla. As Tavita Totola put on report for that chicken wing. Now Andrew Fafida will get brought down on the 30 for the first tackle. Oh, that's a terrible pass. Oh, not a terrible pass, but it's a knock on. Just like that, and the Sharks have knocked it on. That could be momentum killer there as we've now got 21 minutes remaining in the half. Yeah, that that's just a stupid penalty to give away there from Totola. Just a stupid chicken wing. Bit of earth, wind and fire. Totola's like, my bad, my bad. <laughs> to the ref, my bad. So scrum feed now for South Sydney on their 30 metre line. So we enter now, going to pretty much going to be entering into the final 20 minutes. Potentially, South just need to put on, get some more points, really. And they haven't properly set the scrum, so they're going to try that again. Rest telling him to literally pack it in, so it's good to see. And they're pushing and shoving at the moment. It's um, it's not looking good. Potential cattle dog. Bit of footsies in the middle of the scrum as well. You rarely see that. But there we go. South Sydney are able to complete the scrum and they'll get the first tackle on their 40. Now Totola with the ball. That almost looked like a high shot there by Fafida. He's going to be a bit of a target now, Totola, from that chicken wing. Now Mitch Nick, Mark Nichols gets an offload. 
Almost a jumping spring tackle there. On him, third tackle, 45 away from the try line. See us now. Oh, that's charged down. That's going to be a six more. Yep, six more. And here comes the ball. But so, no advantage. It will be. So, it is a knock on by Cronulla, but there's no advantage going to be played. So, it will be a scrum feed to South Sydney. Which would choose some time off the clock. So, it's kind of a preferred thing that South's. That South would want, actually. Yeah, because there was a forward pass as well on the play, so they brought it back. So, in the dark nights of Sydney, that could encapsulate the chances for South, for the Cronulla Sharks. Coming back into this game, but South get the first carry. We get brought down 30 away from the trial line now for the first tackle. So, Mark Nichols now, again, second tackle, gets brought down 25 away from the try line. So, we go third tackle for South Sydney, 15 away. Murray. Walker, massive gap, and that's a try to South Sydney. There was a massive gap, so they, I don't know if there's, I don't think there was anything of an obstruction, but that should be it. So there he is, 28 points to 12. I, I, there was a massive gap, but there's definitely no off shock anyways. So there we go. I'm just trying to see. There's definitely not... Is there an off an obstruction? Nope. There's not an obstruction at all. Walker just runs straight for a massive gap. So there we go. 28 points to 12. I think it's... Yep, try confirms. And I'm just trying to think, is that it? Is I think probably one more try. I think one more, and that should put the game to bed and send South Sydney into the preliminary final. There we go. Cody Walker gets the try. He's actually been really good this game, Cody Walker. Five tries in his past five finals. So, four, 16 and a half to go. Three converted tries needed by Cronulla. There we go. There's the kick. 30 points to 12 now as Latrell gets the kick. Five from five. He was, it's, yeah, he got five from five last week as well. So, he's matched his efforts this week. So, 16 and a half to go. Pretty much, Souths really just need one more try in the next six minutes or so. Then I'll be officially over. Then when you get to like 10 minutes to go, then it probably should be over. If the score stays the same anyways. But there we go. Cronulla can't try any mistake at all. Also just realised the two final students I've done have just happened to have South Sydney in it. Around 18 minutes left, and I think it's season over for the Sharks. Yeah, that's the way it's looking at the moment. They've got to get three converted tries just to tie the game with the way they've been in terms of making mistakes. It's not looking likely, but I feel like officially one more try for South Sydney should seal it, as that is Cameron Murray with the ball gets brought down on the 35 for the fourth tackle. Call Matangi now with the ball. Gets a good offload off to Campbell Graham. And Campbell Graham's on the run. Tries to get a pass off to Tarn Mill. He's still going. And he'll get brought down 30 away from the try line. Last tackle. That's a short kick over. That's a pretty shit kick, to be completely honest. But Sharks get the ball back. 50. Oh, it's a strip by Latrell. Which way? Is, is it a strip or is it a knock on? What's happened? That's surely a one-on-one -on -one strip by Latrell, so it should be South Ball. 
What's the result? Yep, they're challenging this. I'm just trying to figure out what they're going to rule it. So the referee has ruled that there's, it was lost by Souths. Let's have a look. No, it's so ruled as lost by Cronulla. Let's have a look. Touching, touching, touching. Let go. We can't tell. He's down on the ground. It's a one-on-one -on -one strip. He's raked the ball out. Does hit a South Sharks player, though. Is a tackle completed? They're looking at this at the moment because this could definitely decide an aspect of the match. Sup, Will? Can Sharkies come back from this? Honestly, by the way, they're going not really. As the ball popped out. So it should be penalty Cronulla. So challenge successful there for Cronulla. So that should be a penalty to Cronulla. And it will be. So yep, yeah, ball carrying arm was down on the ground. It was held. And then Latrell goes for the strip. Thought it looked fine. But uh, what can you say? So here we go. The Sharks pretty much have to realistically score in the next five minutes. So first tackle there, Hamlin Uele gets just shy of halfway. Now Rudolph enters South Sydney's half, 45 away from the try line. For the third time this year, the grand final rematch part three. Yes, this, this is also actually, you can call it sort of like significant, of course, because when it goes through to the grand final. So interesting to say the least. There's Andrew Fafida now with the ball. 20 away from the try line now. Fourth tackle. Moylan to Hines. Flat ball. So 10 metres out. Last tackle here for the Sharks. This is a huge chance for them. Trying to pass down the line. Over the top. Intercepted. And there's a run by the Sh Sh South Sydney. But Mulatalo's coming in. And he'll wrap him down. That is Tan Milne, I believe. So 25 away from the try line now. First tackle for South Sydney. Huge chance here to kill off the game. Cook will get brought down on the 20 for the second tackle. This is huge. If South get this last try, it should be over. Even if they get the field goal, I think it should be over. Here we go. Mark Nichols now. 10 metres out from the try line. Third tackle. Down to the right. Feeding it off to Totola. Totola getting good spins, but he's short of line. Five meters out. Fourth tackle. Cook. Short ball. Oh, good tackle. Big tackle there. Last tackle here for the Sharks. I mean, for the Souths. Oh, that's... Uh... Oh, it's a try! I thought the pass was terrible, but Tan Milne has just made a terrible pass... Into a try. They're going to check it. It was a horrible pass. But he's able to pick it up and ground it. It did look a bit sloppy. But they're going to check it. And that could just be the final nail in the coffin for Cronulla. And will officially seal South Sydney into the prelim final against Penrith. It was Isaiah Tass who got the interception. Sorry, it wasn't Tan Milne. Try confirmed. There we go. Tan Milne gets his second of the game. And that should be that. With the conversion making it a 24-point lead from the trial from the side. That should be it. Oh, he stays in. Oh, beautiful. Stick a fork in this one, boys. This dinner is done. And we will have the green the grand final of 2021 in the prelim final it'll be Penrith and South Sydney 
at a course at Daniel's Ed Stadium. I'm not calling it a call. Fucker. <laughs> at, at Stadium Australia for the chance to play in the grand final. What a moment that's going to be. Yep, that's it for the Sharks there. You got to be adamant to the Sharks. They had a fantastic season, but it's just hasn't really happened. Yep, there we go. The glizzy. It, that popped up. And off. Latrell's actually just nuts at goal kicking. Like, he just is. He's got to be, like, the best goal kicker in the NRL. Like, come on. That's just nuts. Oh, the grand final rematch next next week, just like last year. That is true, Bosky. You are right. Yes. Of course, because uh, Penrith played Storm last year in the prelims. And it was obviously the 2020 grand final. You are correct. So the next 11 minutes are going to be pretty interesting because it's pretty much it. So on the 30 for the second tackle now. This is basically just a chance for South Sydney to just put even more points. Can they get to 50? They only need about three tries. I mean, they only need three tries in 11 minutes. Campbell Graham now with the ball gets brought down. 45 away from the try line for the fourth tackle. Now 35 away. Last tackle here for South Sydney. There's a kick by the Rabbits. And it's going to be pressure on William Kennedy. William Kennedy will get it. That is a bit of a high shot there on time by Tarn Milne. And it will be a penalty to the Sharks. Milne, that's the thing. When it comes to next week, Tarn Milne needs to calm down. Because he's very, he did get simbinned last week and he, he needs to keep his temper in check. Especially against Penrith because it very easily cause a, um, a bit of a row and potentially a disadvantage for, for South next week. So there we go. Andrew Fafita now with the ball. Gets brought down on the 30 for the first tackle. Jai Arrow, I think he got a hand to the groin. Now we enter the final 10 minutes of the game and pretty much Souths have to score every single set. Yep, Jai Arrow has basically got palms by Andrew Fafita trying to get up. He's got it right into his, uh, into his groin. So third tackle now for the Sharks right on halfway. Shifting it off to the left-hand side now. Nico Hines with the ball. Gets it off to Connor Tracy. Tries to get it off to Miller. And it's a strip. But he goes out anyways. It's just... That's how good Souths have been ever since this uh, second half has gone up. Sharks had a really good start. But it's just... Souths just been able to come in. They haven't had much mistakes, South Sydney, this second half. As, um... There we go. It's Jai Arrow's about to come off as Cheekem should come on to pretty much finish out the game within the second row. Chai Camus, Cheekem is second rower? Maybe. I'm not too sure. Yeah, you got all of the feeders about 110 kilos <laughs> for frame into his balls. So South Sydney now on the second tackle, right on halfway. Now they go down the short side. Campbell Graham now with the ball. And Campbell Graham will be brought and be held up on the Sharks 40 for the third tackle. Almost a big line break there for South Sydney. 25 away for the fourth tackle. That's Totola. They're just saying, but ten, yeah, because the chicken wing, kind of chicken wing get you suspended. Here you go, last tackle, 10 metres out now for South Sydney. Blocker just brought that up. Murray with the ball, doesn't know what to do. Last tackle, kick, the bounce is in favour. And Mulatalo will take it and will be brought into touch. It is a goal line dropout. So 
So seven and a half minutes to go. It's just the time's just going to keep on going. It's a short kick there from the dropout. And it's touched by, is it Cronulla? So I think it's a scrum feed for South Sydney 10 metres out, or is it Sharks ball? Okay, they're just going to check to see if Souths have touched it. Yes, up, Liam. So who touches it before it goes out? Oh, yeah, it's clearly touched by Souths. And it goes out, so it's going to be a scrum feed to Cronulla on the 10, so the, sh uh, the Rabbitohs will lose their challenge. So there we go. So scrum feed now for South for Cronulla. So you just got to think. It's just kind of mental to think about second place for the Sharks and out in back-to-back -back matches, out losing two matches in a row. Hamlin Nwale now gets brought down onto the 30 for the second tackle. Yep, so Tom Burgess also, he's like already got to add, scratch him out for next week because he's got the two-week suspension. So fourth tackle now for the Cowboys. For, for Cowboys, the Sharks, 35 away from the try line. Kick for Nico Hines to Molotalo. And there's open space. Molotalo slips over in the step. He's still going with the ball. Back on the back flick. And Nakora just short of the line. One metre away from the try line. Last tackle now for Cronulla. They don't know what to do with the ball. Nico Hines. Moylan with the ball. Still trying to figure it out. And he's just passed it straight to Souths. Knock on Sharks. So it's a scrum for South Sydney. What a try. That would have been very definitely. It was a good behind the back flick pass. Haven't put the cue in the rack yet, the Sharks, pretty much. Sad in 2020, lost my grandfather two years ago, man. And sorry to hear that, Liam. It's, uh, it's, a very, it's, very, it's very unfortunate to hear about that. So for Fida now, set to probably come back on, or that could be it for him. Or he's probably just off of the game. He's just thinking what could have been because... Oh, for Feeder could be... This could be his last year for Feeder. Campbell Graham with the ball and he'll get brought... He's still getting the offload off so the Souths are still playing. And Cameron Murray he ends up gets a line break. He'll be brought down 45 away from the try line for the fourth tackle. Another early kick here by South Sydney. That'll be taken by William Kennedy inside the 10. So we've got four and a half to go until... I mean, it was, it was over about 10 minutes. Not 10 minutes ago, but about seven or eight minutes ago. The Cameron Murray... I think, I think Cameron Murray... I think it's between him and Tarn Mill in terms of man of the match. Passing in. The Sharks are on the run here. Connor Tracy. Oh, he's lost it. How has he put the ball down? Tarn Milne grabbing him and force it somehow forces Connor Tracy to lose the ball. And the Sharks seasons end there. I mean it was it did end about six minutes ago, but yeah, that just sums up the night there for the Sharks. Three minutes fifty remaining in this game. Second tackle, twenty five out now. Mark Nichols with the ball. Gets brought down fifteen away. Third tackle. And it's a penalty to Souths. Yep, that's yep. I think that's the right call. South Sydney probably going for the two to make it thirty-eight to twelve, and just chew out about a minute's worth of time. So there's only about two and a half left in the game. The Souths have just never been comfortable in this match. 
And you're just seeing starting a lot of the empty seats within the Cronulla Sharks area. There's a South Sydney Rabbitohs wave the flags. I'll probably just put it this at the stand there. And they raise up their letters that were also planted. <laughs> So just going to chew out as much time as possible as they're showing all the uh, inbreds in the crowd. But here we go, Latrell Mitchell to make this a 26-point lead. Here comes the kick right over the top. He's got it. 26 point lead for South Sydney. So Joe Arrows felt a twinge in his uh in his groin area. Sharks will be good for next year. Good call and credit. Congrats, Celsius. Yeah, it's just um, just a good match performance here by Souths. So they've got to check on a few plays realistically on um if some of them will be playing or not. But minute fifty to go. South, I think it's a penalty. Is it a penalty of the Sharks or the Rabbit? It's penalty Sharks. So. This will be the last set for the Cronulla Sharks in this 2022 NRL season. Had a really good run, but... Just got to think... What would have would it be different if Talakai and Royce Hunt were playing? But who knows? Second tackle now, 10 metres over the try line now for the Sharks. This is purely just Constellation. Kennedy to Tracy. Another tackle brought down now as we enter the final minute of the semi-finals. Sharks still trying to get over for the line here. Fourth tackle. Kennedy off the line to Moylan. Out the line for Nukem with the ball, and it'll get brought down five minutes short of the line for the last tackle. 40 seconds remaining. This is pretty much it. Nico Hines with the grubber kick. And it's taken by Souths. And that should do it. An absolute brilliant performance by South Sydney. Have been a bit shaky in some parts, but they have very much gotten the job done. They just got to have a keep an eye on a few players with their um with their injuries, but um if potential injuries if not, but they know the task that is up again next week. Penrith at at a stadium Australia. One, that's it. South Sydney are through to the preliminary final, beating the Cronulla Sharks thirty eight points to twelve. The Sharks go out. From second place out in two matches in the finals, losing 32-30 to 30 in the match against South Sydney in the qualifying final. And now 38 points to 12 to South Sydney. I think Cronulla will very much go well next year to say the very least, but it's just not to be. But there we go. A grand final rematch scheduled for the preliminary final. Like Bosky said, just like last week, last year, sorry. So that makes it out as Friday will be North Queensland and Parramatta and Saturday, Penrith and South Sydney. So I can't do the Penrith South Sydney game, unfortunately, but um, I will be doing the Friday one. So North Queensland against Parramatta, that will be the game I will be doing. So I very much tune into that. I'll probably also end up in that week, potentially do... The Super League Grand Final, depending on when that is on. But there we go. That is going to be the end of the stream. Just want to say thank you all very much uh, for watching this. It's uh, 
thought starting at 17 15 was a bit weird and i've tr somehow tried to waffle 45 minutes and i've somehow achieved that but there we go that's it so um yeah thank you all very much for watching and i will see you on friday